In this tutorial, you'll learn how to maximize the brightness and contrast of your video in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm working with video I recently shot of Democratic congressional candidate Anthony Flacavento. I shot it indoors under fluorescent light, and while the color balance is fine, this white up here is white, the video is a little bit dingy, and you might say it lacks contrast. It's also noisy, which is a problem we'll deal with in a later tutorial. Now when I'm adjusting the color or brightness in a video in Premiere Pro, I like to move into the color correction workspace and click window workspace and then go into color correction. And this is a workspace that I set up and customized. Um, the workspace you go into is going to be a little bit different, but it's, uh, you know, the, the main pieces will be showing. This is the waveform monitor. Uh, these are the effect controls. Here's the timeline and here's the video. Now, you can see in the waveform monitor that you have a lot of other options. Click up here in the flyout panel. You see this is composite video. This is how you get this to match this. An alpha view, all the scopes available. You've got an RGB parade, a YUV parade, a waveform, and a vector scope. And I like just working with the YC waveform. I don't see, I don't get a lot of benefit from these other three scopes. So let's just go back to that. So what does the YC waveform show us? Basically, it shows us the brightness of the pixels at their respective location in the frame. So over here, we see a whiteboard, and over here, we see a clump of pixels here. This represents the brightness of the pixels in the whiteboard. Now, in a, in a, in a well-lit scene, a well-contrasted scene, the white would be up around 100 IRE. And this is the Institute of Radio Engineers scale, and it goes from 0 to 100. And along this scale, white should be around 100 IRE. Blacks, and we see black here and black here, should be right around 0 IRE. And pixels in the face should be right around between 65 and 75 IRE at their brightest. Now I've moved the current time indicator to a spot on the timeline where we get good movement in the candidate's face. And we can see that the bulk of the pixels are moving here below 60 IRE. So the face is too dark. The whites are close to being okay, but the blacks are, are faded, and that's why the image lacks contrast. Now, the control you want to attack this with is the brightness and contrast control, no surprise there. And let's see how the two adjustments work real quickly. So I'm going to drag the slider, and notice in the waveform monitor that all the pixels are going to move. This is when I make it brighter. This is when I make it darker. And let me, let me reset this and go back to the starting point. And then this is the contrast adjustment. And what the contrast adjustment does is it pushes the pixels further away from each other. It increases the contrast as contrast is defined. Contrast is the difference between the brightest and the darkest. And the contrast control makes the contrast more stark. Let me reset that again. Now we can see that the whites up here are closer to 100 than the blacks are to 0. So I'm going to adjust the brightness down. And then I'm going to adjust the contrast to push everything towards the extremes. So now we have the whiteboard at or around 100 IRE. We have the black pixels here and the black pixels here at or around zero. Now if you push this too far, if you push these whites up into the 100 IRE, notice how we lose the detail in the shirt here. So I'm going to drag this to the right. And you can see that you can see less and less of the shirt. And that's called crushing the detail. So whenever you start to see a lot of pixels really close to the 100 up here or really close to the 0 down here, you start worrying about losing detail. This is the critical detail in a white area in the scene. You know, we should be fine. We're not losing any detail there. So we started off by pushing the brightness down, which made the face darker. Uh, we've got the blacks at 0 IRE, that's where we want them. Whites at 100, that's where we want them. Unfortunately, the face, if we wiggle down here, is still too dark. Most of the pixels are well below the 60 IRE. So how do we attack that? We attack that with the gamma correction effect. So real quickly, what does gamma do? According to the Premiere Pro help file, the gamma correction effect lightens or darkens a clip without substantially changing the shadows or the highlights. So in theory, this should allow us to just boost the midtones here without pushing these up or without pushing these up. And let's see how it works. So we've got the gamma correction. It's enabled. And I'm going to drag that to the left to brighten things. Drag it to 9. And we see that we're pushing some of the 
blacker pixels up off the zero IRE, but we're seeing very little movement here. And let me go to an extreme, so we'll see how that works. Again, the whites are being crushed a little bit, but not to the same degree as you would see if you adjusted the brightness control directly. So now we're at nine, now we're at eight, and let me push the contrast a little bit further here to make sure that the black pixels stay black. And now let's go back to our timeline, wiggle the face, and we see a lot more pixels extending up over the 60 IRE line, even close to touching the 80 IRE, which is okay because we've got a really nasty bright spot there that, um, that should be around 80 IRE. If you don't like the bright spot, let's back that down. And yeah, I could go either way, nine, eight. They both brighten the face a little bit. Let me come back and check here. Yeah, I probably, I probably would go to eight on this. I want a nice bright face. That's gonna look better after we compress it. We're gonna compress this and upload it to YouTube after multiple compressions. I want the face as bright as possible from the starting point so it is preserved through all those compression cycles. Okay, so let me close this, let me close this, and let me just mention another effect called the shadow highlight effect. Now shadow highlight is an effect I've used for years and only recently started noticing that with my high definition footage, it started causing flickering. And it's hard to see in Premiere Pro itself. I'll show you a file that I produced with it in a moment. But a couple of, couple of items in the controls. Number one, if you look at the Premiere Pro help file, you'll see that temp temporal smoothing is supposed to cure flickering. Temporal smoothing is not available when you've deselected auto amounts. If you wanna customize the effect yourself, then you don't have access to temporal smoothing. It's grayed out. So in auto amounts, you do have access to temporal smoothing, but even with temporal smoothing selected, this is a clip that I produced with shadow highlights. And notice the flickering in the background. Now there's been a lot of discussion on this on the Adobe boards. There's been a lot of discussion on this in say Creative Cow, other other discussion lists, and I was unable, you know, knowing all the rules, knowing that flickering was supposed to go away if you enabled temporal smoothing, I was unable to make it go away. Not a huge deal, because Gamma does pretty much the same thing, but um, if you've been using shadow highlights and you're seeing flickering, then, then I would suggest going to Gamma Correction right away. Let me deselect this. So this is the starting point of our video. It looks a little bit dingy. We can see that it lacks contrast in the waveform. And in just a couple of minutes, this is where we got it. So if you spend a few minutes learning how to use Premiere Pro's waveform monitor, you'll wonder how you ever worked without it. Next time up, we'll tackle the noise issue. I'm Jan Ozer. Thanks for watching.